nakedness. Now, this is something I think is, is taught by a lot of like preachers online that we listen to. And I don't believe it's actually, uh, you can actually um, support this view from the Bible. And I think if you actually look at the verses that they use to teach that the thigh is nakedness, you'll see that it doesn't actually hold water. I already went to one where it was the one in Exodus where it says from the loins to the thighs they shall reach. And then they'll say because it reaches to the thighs, the thighs included, it should be nakedness. And I think that doesn't hold water because number one, it doesn't say from the loins to the knees to cover the thighs. It says it goes from the loins to the thighs. So how can it cover the thighs? And also the loins are not nakedness. So you can't use that verse. If you do, you would have to say cover your loins as well, as well as your thighs because they're both nakedness. Now the other verse that is used to prove that the thigh is nakedness is in Isaiah 47.1. And this is really the only two verses you can go to to prove that the thighs the pro prove, quote unquote, the thigh is nakedness. But just read it with me and let me, you, you see whether or not you think it teaches that the thigh is nakedness. It says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. Now when you read that passage, do you think it's clearly stating that the thigh is nakedness? Or do you, or, do you think somebody already believes the thigh is nakedness and therefore they link verse 3 to verse 2, where the verse 2 says, uncover the thigh, and then they link that to the nakedness mentioned in verse 3. Now I don't think you could, you could take that verse on its own and prove that the thigh is nakedness. I think what where somebody would use this verse to support that the thigh is naked is, is that they would already have that idea they would have that idea maybe from the exodus passage that the thigh is nakedness and then they would read that meaning into this and link verse 3 to verse 2. now the reason why i don't think you could clearly get it just from this verse is because look at it in verse 2 it says there's a few things listed isn't it it says take the millstones and grind meal Uncover thy locks. What is to uncover your locks? It means obviously the hair is covered with a delicate woman, I'm guessing, and saying you're not going to be delicate because now you're going to work hard and grind meal, things like that. So it says uncover your locks, you know, so basically show your hair, make bare the leg. Now the leg is more than just the thigh, isn't it? The leg is like your calf. I don't know if you include, you know, the foot, whatever. So you're making bare this the whole piece, not just the thigh. And then it says uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. And then it says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. So my question is, why, why, why is it only that, like if, if the thigh is naked, why have they only chosen that one? Out of the list of five things, like taking the millstone, uncovering locks, making bare the leg, uncovering the thigh and passing over the rivers, they've just like arbitrarily taken the thy nakedness in verse 3 and said, yeah, it just, it just corresponds with just that one. You know, and that, that's, that thigh is naked. So, you know, there are more things happening in this verse. She's uncovering her hair. So why isn't uncovering your hair uncovering your nakedness? You know, why isn't your whole leg nakedness? You know, why is it only the thigh? Because that's the thing. They've got a preconceived idea that the thigh is nakedness and they're trying to use this verse to prove that the thigh is nakedness, but the thigh is not nakedness. Now, does that mean, therefore, that it's not a sin for a woman to walk around, around in bike pants. I, like I would, I would dispute maybe a bikini bottom, right? Because a bikini bottom, I don't know whether that really covers your buttocks, right? Unless maybe you wear like grandma bikini bottoms, right? <laughs> you know, like bike pants, you know, you're covering, let's say you're covering your buttocks, you've covered your nakedness. But if you haven't covered your thigh, are you naked according to the Bible? I don't think so. And I, think, I don't think you can use the Exodus passage and this passage to prove that they're revealing their nakedness and therefore in, in sin. Um, if you, believe that cover, if you believe that revealing your nakedness is even a sin, and I'm going to get to that in a second. But um, <laughs> the thigh, first of all, is not nakedness, and I don't think you can prove it. Now, does that mean that it's all right to walk around in a bikini bottom? No, because see, this is an issue of modesty. And just because something is not a sin to do doesn't mean it's immodest, but we judge modesty a different way, and I'll go into that into another sermon. So I don't believe you can prove that the thigh is nakedness um, according to these verses because uncovering your hair is not nakedness, making bare your leg is not nakedness, passing over rivers and grinding meal is not nakedness. So why can you just take verse 3 and just apply it only to the uncovering of the thigh? Um, I believe you'd only be able to do that if you already have a preconceived idea of what you think nakedness is. Um, and I don't think you can prove it's the thigh.